Were you anticipating that they would get the stay of execution when it came to the ban? Yes. So on December 26th, the day after the ban actually came into place on Christmas Day, Apple was able to file an emergency motion uh, to appeals courts in Washington uh, to get this, this, this ban temporarily stayed. Now, this temporary stay is going to last until January 10th at minimum. So they're going to get an extra two weeks of, of sales thanks to this stay that they otherwise would not have. Uh, this was anticipated. Apple made a fairly good argument they showed in previous cases. Uh, where injunctions had been in place, how this same court uh, did grant temporary uh, a stay. So, yes, it was pretty clear to me and I think a few others that this would happen. And it indeed happened uh, this morning. We're still waiting to hear back from Apple to, to see if they're putting this, the watch back on sale immediately, if it'll be later today or tomorrow. Uh, you know, it's a pretty arduous process operationally to get the thing on the online store, remove it from the online store, get them back in retail stores, get them out of retail stores. <laughs> So we're going to have to just wait and see how long they're going to play this cat and mouse game for. Hey, Mark, is there any reason to believe the parties here, Apple and Massimo, can come to some kind of settlement here, monetary settlement? Yeah, at this point, given that Apple is having some success in the legal proceedings here, I think that makes the settlement more and more unlikely. You can see Massimo's stock fell as much as over 6% this morning. I think some people who bought Massimo's stock banking on additional long-term revenue from Apple are starting to realize that's simply not going to happen. Uh, and so certainly, I think, like I said, a settlement is less and less likely. They're going to get this temporary stay. And our understanding of a temporary stay from this appeals court is that this court would not have given a temporary stay if they didn't ultimately ultimately believe that this issue was going to be resolved uh, somewhat in the near future. Now, January 10th, mark your calendar for that. That's the next hearing for the ITC to respond to this temporary stay. After that is January 12th. That's when the U.S. Customs Agency, which also has the ability to reverse the ban and allow imports of the Apple Watch into the United States, they're going to, to determine whether or not Apple's software fix that it developed is sufficient to no longer infringe Mossimo's patents. So, we're sort of coming up on uh, two weeks away from this either exploding into Apple getting the watch rebanned or uh, the ban being a thing of the past. Just going back to the history of all of this, you've got a great piece out talking about how this whole saga was set in motion by a late night email to Tim Cook. I think it was 1 a.m. back in 2013, <laughs> he got an email from. Then was the scientist over at Massimo's sister company talking about sort of the irresistibility of a new wave of technology that ultimately was sort of the oxygen reader that, that has been in dispute here. What do you think, if anything, Massimo's ultimately going to be able to prove because it looks as though they failed in the court previously but it is the ITC that's that's come to its salvation that's exactly right I, I couldn't have said it better they did fail in the court it was a hung jury the jury voted in favor of Apple six to one and in fact it's Marcelo Lamego and this is a crazy story for those who haven't read the article I encourage you to do so he writes an email at 12:53 a.m. to Tim Cook uh, saying that he knows how to build blood oxygen, he knows how to build health sensors, he knows how to make this technology work. Let me come to Apple, join your team and make this happen. Ten hours later, he gets an email from an Apple recruiter. Weeks later, he's already working on Apple. He only somehow lasts at Apple six months, right? And then he creates his own wearables company, falls off the face of the earth, Massimo sued his his company, his follow up company, into oblivion. It's just a crazy story with this guy who's um, developed these health sensors, who's going from company to company. And as compelling as the email is, and you can see the email in my story, uh, the, the the judge threw it out and didn't even let the jury make determinations based on it. But still, I think that Massimo's gripe with this engineer and him going to Apple and their beliefs about this guy, it actually sparked this legal fight, right? A decade ago, this was the origin story leading to the lawsuit, leading to the Apple countersuit, leading to the ITC uh, putting this ban into place. So it's just such a fascinating story, the, the origin here.